Hi everybody, welcome to the Manful channel. Today we're going to learn how to create displays like this which show uh, the entire world in uh, so-called azimuthal projection. This particular projection is the vertical perspective projection which shows the Earth as if you're flying above it from space at a given altitude above a certain central point and the central point here is somewhere in, uh, uh, in uh, Greece. So uh, what we want to do is we want to create that from a, uh, a world map like this which uh, shows uh, in uh, latitude and longitude the various countries of the world and uh, the uh, the problem with azimuthal dis perspectives uh, projections is that when you wrap all those countries around the ones from the other side of the world tend to show through so your GIS has to either clip them automatically or you have to do it manually I'm going to show you how to do it uh, do all that manually and uh, let's start by creating a, uh, a map uh, based on this uh, on the world and we're going to call that a uh, VP map that sounds good so there we go and uh, I'll close this and open up the VP map and uh, you can see this is the world reprojected into uh, uh, pseudo Mercator so uh, that makes uh, Alaska really huge first thing I'm going to do let's turn off this vertical projection image because I'm not going to use it first thing I'm going to do is we're going to uh, reproject this into the display that we want the, the uh, projection that we wanted to do that we click on the info pane click on the map uh, projection here and uh, uh, we are going to uh, turn reproject that into uh, vertical perspective I'm going to call it here vertical perspective and the type of, it, of that projection is going to be this and the center latitude I'm going to make the center latitude about 45 north and the center longitude about uh, uh, 25 east and the center height we want 5,000 kilometers so let's add a couple more three more zeros to that to make that meters that looks good so let's click OK and there's our projection you can see the classic problem where it's wrapping uh, objects from what should be the other side uh, other hemisphere that's blocked by the the sphere of the earth itself the ellipsoid of the earth itself for example here's Antarctica and here's uh, Australia all those need to be clipped and here's the United States in, inverted from all that so we want to clip those and uh, let's start by uh, saving this uh, projection as a favorite vertical perspective alt click it uh, control click it to select it click add to favorites and now I can create drawings and such from that using using that as a favorite uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to create a disk to uh, uh, to be able to mask to be able to use to trim the backward the uh, the uh, objects that we don't need and so let's create a drawing and the new drawing we're going to call disk uh, and uh, that's going to be based on vertical perspective you can see why I saved that and so let's create drawing and I'm going to drag and drop that drawing into uh, here. Uh, into this display and uh, let's make that uh, let's style that drawing let's let's give it a bright color uh, let's make it a bright blue and uh, we'll make that uh, give that a 50 percent opacity and uh, how are we going to create the disk we're going to create a disk shape object that uh, that exactly covers the world to that outline and the easiest way to do that is to uh, what I've done is I've imported some graticules here from natural earth these are grids grid shaped lines that cover the entire earth so let's drag and drop the five degree graticule into the earth and so you can see that when we look at the outer edges of this graticle that pretty much covers the the earth uh, uh, exactly matching the disk that we want so that's how we're going to create the disk and to do that I'm going to click create area and here I want to make sure that I want to snap to all layers not just to the act active layer and I want to turn on snap and so now uh, watch when I move the cursor to create the area you can see the little snap box will snap to whatever is the outermost uh, uh, object that's near the cursor so as long as I keep the cursor outside of you know all this stuff in here it's it's going to snap to the the edge of that grid and uh, let's start by uh, clicking here and then I'm going to move every few uh, every little bit keeping the cursor outside I'm doing this quickly for the sake of the video to do it uh, you know more professionally if we actually wanted to uh, uh, create this uh, you know as they say in real life I'd be more careful and I'd be clicking twice as many points and I'd probably use the uh, one degree grid you know so give to give me more uh, grid locations as they're wrapped around the uh, earth that I can uh, snap to because sometimes depending on how that uh, 
five degree grid wraps it wraps inside the disc at the very outermost parts and sometimes it's a little bit it's exactly on the edge where I want it there and I click uh, save changes and I've just created that a nice disc shaped object which it neatly over overlaps the world I'm going to turn off the uh, default I'm going to turn off the uh, go back to the default cursor and you can see what, how we've created that dis disc, cre disc shaped uh, object and that disc shaped object is, is the disc in the vertical perspective uh, Actually, you know, I don't like how this is done here, so let's uh, go back here to the disk, and I'm going to click that, and uh, hmm. this just goes to show you how you can uh, move that, and let's uh, create a, this one out a little bit farther, too. This one, too, I'll move a little bit farther. All right, that's just a little bit prettier, and you know what? I can actually even add a cord in here. Let's... Uh, Insert chorus. No, I'll just I'll just leave it as is. Uh, so there, update record, and that just moves the disk out for it a little bit. All right. Uh, so onward. Let's uh. Let's now clip the uh, objects that are in the world display, and to do that, I'm going to create another map using world, and create a map. And uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, use the coordinate system of world, create map. So now I've created this. Uh, new map here with world in and I've created this in latitude and longitude and I'm going to drag and drop the disk into there and again let's uh, let's make that a 50 percent uh, opaque so what we're looking at here is we're looking at a latitude and longitude display and now we're seeing how this the disk that we created in vertical perspective what does that look like in latitude and longitude and that's what it looks like and we're going to use this disk to clip the world and to do that, we're going to use the transform uh, project, to, uh, transform pane to clip the ge world geometry. We use clip. And world, we're going to clip with disk, and we're going to keep the inner part. If I click preview, you can see that's what's left. That's what it's going to be left. So let's, uh, let's put the result into a, a new drawing, and we'll call this uh, world clipped. Click transform. And there, it's just transformed. It eclipsed the, those areas that quickly. Uh, but it didn't clip the ones up, 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 up here at the very top. And uh, that's kind of like uh, an inside trick, which we're going to do here. So we're going to go back into the transform. Uh, because of the way uh, the projections uh, work, uh, when this does, when it clips the inner ones, uh, it didn't actually capture the full disk, because the full disk actually goes way over top here. And uh, it's going to miss these upper parts of Greenland and, and, and so forth. So. I want to clip those and instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the outer part and so I'm going to clip the world with the geometry disk and there you can see that's what it's going to leave so now we're going to call that clipped extras and click transform there okay so let's turn off the disk let's turn off the world and now when, you, when we do the clipped extras you can see that what we've created here we want to leave these guys right there so let's zoom in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these. Now I'm going to control I to invert. And uh, let's uh, zoom out so you can see what we're going to do here. Now I'm going to click Edit, Delete. delete. So, I, so now we just have those extras. Those are, those are the clipped extras. Let's uh, use those in our on our map right here. And instead of World, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop the World Clip into the display and you can see that's nicely clipped but you can see up here and I'm going to put the disk underneath it turn the disk back on and uh, you can see also how we can use the disk by the way to simulate what the ocean is if you look at what's going on up here these are the parts of the the world that are missing because of because uh, because uh, the way the projections work so I'm going to add the uh, extras to those and let's uh, world clip extras let's drag and drop them right there so now you can see you know what those extras are that, that those tiny those most northernmost bits and pieces that appear over there. So okay, so here's our world, and uh, we're actually very close to being done here uh, because we've just basically, you know, created the thing the way we wanted to. So let's uh, let's throw in some graticules. Let's take the graticule 10 and throw that in, and you can see there's graticule 10. And uh, the problem with that is that we need to clip the graticule 10 as well. All right, so let's do that back here in our other map where our disk is. And uh, let's turn those off and let's take the Graticule 10 map, throw it in there. And we want to clip all these Graticule lines to leave only the ones that uh, uh, are within the disk. So there we go again. We'll transform and we want to transform 
Graticule 10, and we want to tran transform the geometry. We want to use clip. We want to clip it with disk. And we want to keep the inner part. Let's do a preview so you can see the ones that we're going to clip. And let's put the results into uh, a new table. We're going to call that uh, Click Graticule 10. And I think I used all our case nets, so let's be consistent in this. And click Transform, and there it's been done. Alright, so instead of Graticule 10, which I'll delete from the map, I'll use uh, the uh, Clip Graticule 10. And there, there's that's a nice, uh, pretty look to it. Hmm. We do want to uh, style those the same way we did before, so let's style these uh, with uh, lines, and let make, let's make the lines. Uh, uh, first, let's uh, let's change this to like uh, three and four. Click apply. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's about the right kind of look to it. Okay, and I want to make that really a that's a little bit too thin. Okay, let's make it about that. Great, and let's change the color so that the color is. Uh, about a 70% gray. All right, so now we have Graticule, and we've got those. And so th this is actually pretty close to the display that we want. The uh, World Clip display, though, I uh, you know, really want to change the uh, border lines to make the border thinner. I want to make it about uh, 0.6. OK, and uh, the World Clip extras, I also want to make it about the same. Make the border about 0.6. I really could, could should be able to should merge both of those drawings together to make them one drawing, so that way I could format them all the same. Uh, and uh, let's uh, let's add some color to this. Let's uh, style this in. We'll style this by the uh, well. Let's style this by the country name and uh, tally. And let's uh, let's use color brewer. Let's use a pastel B. Update the style. So there, that's about where we want to be. I think. And uh, let's change this uh, to be a less harsh border to make that about a 70% border. And yet, as you can see, that's about the uh, that's about the display that we want to make. That's what we started off to look at. You can tinker around with this for a while. And uh, the vertical perspective image, you know, I did some more tinkering. So you can see I used finer graphical lines here, and uh, we used a slightly different coloring. Uh, and uh, we also put a, a background to the map. Let's put a background layer. Let's make that background layer about that. Now it's too dark. Let's make it about like that. So that, as you can see, that's that's yeah, that's how we create these things. And uh, we can have some more fun with this. For example, we can. Uh, you don't have to use uh, vector lines once you have the perspective. I mean, with vectors, you have to clip them, and you have to use this process the same way we did it to uh, you know create that disk to, to uh, clip it. And the disk is a uh, is actually okay. Let's go back here. Let's turn this map on. You know the disk is uh, is uh, has to be done for each different perspective. So that if we change the uh, uh, projection here, so that we move the vertical perspective to say higher up or lower down or something like that, we'd have to you know start with the original world uh, objects and clip them. You know again using a disk. You know that we create based on that particular perspective, in, as as we did in this map here. Uh, so anytime you're working with the vector objects, be they graticules, be they uh, layers that show countries as, as areas or something like that, you know, you, you're going to have to clip them. Uh, but as you can see, that's a very quick process. Uh, what we could do is, uh, uh, the nice thing about working with rasters though, for example, we have a world relief uh, in one kilometer here, which is a pretty good high, high, high resolution picture. This shows uh, where uh, every pixel is uh, one kilometer in size. And that's what about uh, 17 gigabytes or something like that. But the surprising thing about Manifold is that uh, it's so fast that uh, we can uh, we can take this world relief one kilometer interest image and drag it and drop it into that display, and Manifold will reproject it on the fly. Uh, the image has a hole up here at the top, so uh, if we want, we can uh, change the color of the disk to uh, match that hole. And the way we do that is. Uh, First the layers, the disk is 50%. Uh, Let's make it 100%. And, uh, and now what I want to do is I want to style the disks that this color here will use the color picker to match the uh, ocean that's the background there in the image. And you can see that that, that, that removes the uh, color there for the disk. Uh, what's happening here is why this is kind of a more blurry on this side is because the uh, projection uh, expands, you know, those pixels. Uh, to uh, 
to uh, match uh, the, you know, the, the view of the projection that interpolates them. As we zoom closer, you'll get a higher resolution view of that, uh, uh, that image. Uh, which is pretty cool when you think about it because uh, we're looking at this in vertical perspective and it's zooming in to use uh, the uh, pyramids of the image that, that have been actually created that is, as you zoom farther in and as you zoom farther out you know it uses the less intense pyramids and uh, believe it or not all this actually works with uh, uh, let's turn world relief off and all this works with uh, image servers too so for example here's an image server layer this is a, a Google satellite and uh, let's drag and drop uh, the Google Satellite image into this map. And Manifold will reproject it that fast. Here again, as you can see, there's there's that hole near the top. And uh, let's cheat here a little bit. Let's uh, let's style this so that the background disk, so the color picker, so it's this dark color there. And like I say, that's uh, that doesn't quite fill in the hole where Google has a hole at the top of it. Uh, but that's okay, you know. Uh, that still is, that still is a pretty good look. And you can see what that looks like here. In fact, we probably want to change the graticule to make the uh, foreground color around that white. Uh, did I do that right? No, that's the, uh, right here it is. There. That's not the cleanest look though. So let's change the layers. Let's make the graticule 50% uh, there. Uh, so now we can uh, zoom in and, and see various parts of Google. And as we zoom farther in, uh, Google will automatically uh, generate a high resolution image for us as we go farther in. You know, that only goes so far because the cues that are being passed to Google, to the Google image server to tell it uh, what resolution to show are, uh, you know, being messed up by the translation into a vertical perspective projection since Google assumes everything is going to be in, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, in a pseudo Mercator projection. But nonetheless, as you kind of zoom in, you can see how this stuff, uh, how this stuff will change. <laughs> there, there we got, there we got it to go to to Greece, and as we go farther up, uh, farther north, the uh, layer at which uh, level at which Google will change to that perspective changes, uh, and uh, but uh, the uh, image that we're using the the uh, world clipped image, uh, which is a vector image that we have a vector layer that we have in Manifold, uh, that's always razor sharp because that's of course uh, something that Manifold itself is generating interpolating on the fly. So anyway, this has been kind of like a long set. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, view to dis to see how uh, uh, Manifold can be used to uh, create these uh, azimuthal projections. Uh, there are some limitations in the az azimuthal projections because uh, depending on, you know, uh, what data you're s you started with in terms of, uh, you know, the uh, background layer, the uh, layer that you're using for the world world objects, it may not be filled in at the top or, or at the bottom depending on uh, 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 on uh, what the data set is because data sets are often clipped you know so that the uh, images uh, uh, so that the uh, areas aren't totally filled in at the north north pole at the south pole but uh, you know you can work with all that and, and find different layers that work better or less and uh, it's pretty easy as you can see to create these uh, azimuth projections of anywhere in the world and uh, as you can see from the, the actual speed of the clipping it's just insanely fast it just happens instantly anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have tell your friends and uh, goodbye from Manifold Land well, that was fun. Uh, if you want to see more, visit us at www.manifold.net. Uh, as always, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS at a low price that you can afford. Once again, that's uh, manifold.net. See you soon.